Hi guys, welcome to Amateur Chemistry. So, some of you might have heard about an experiment called the chemical garden. It's not super popular, but you can make some beautiful decorations and it's very easy to do using just home chemistry. The experiment is composed of firstly making an aqueous solution of sodium silicate and then dropping some metal salt crystals into it to produce some nice looking structures which can look like a colorful garden. The color of the garden depends on the metal salt used, and metal salts can have a ton of different colors. Unfortunately, not all salts work for this, especially the alkali metal ones. The garden that I made was blue, because I used copper sulfate as the salt of my choice. So, to prepare the experiment, we first need to make the sodium silicate. It is really simple, and to do that we just need some sodium hydroxide obtained from a drain cleaner, and a source of silicon dioxide such as silica cat litter or some silica gel drying pellets. To make the reaction, we first need to add 30 grams of the silica gel to a beaker, followed by 15 grams of sodium hydroxide. If you want to make the sodium silicate more pure, you can remove the colored pellets, but in the end it makes no significant difference. Then we add 15 ml of water and the beaker starts to heat up by the dissolvement of sodium hydroxide, which drives the reaction forward and produces our desired sodium silicate. The reason why we need to add only a small amount of water to do this reaction is that the sodium hydroxide can only dissolve the silica in high concentrations. But the glass is also silicon dioxide, so why this reaction does not eat my beakers? Well, a beaker is composed of a very firm and densely packed form of silicon dioxide. The silica gel is like a very porous sponge, which has microscopic holes that allow it to absorb tons of water and make its surface area very high. After heating the mixture to speed up the process, there were some unreacted silica gel pieces. But I just filtered them and was left with a very concentrated and thick solution of sodium silicate, which was also very basic because of all of the unreacted sodium hydroxide. I tried to neutralize it using vinegar and citric acid, but instead I made some kind of weird jelly. If anyone has an idea what this might be, please write it in the comments. So, to prepare the garden, we first need to dilute 25 ml of the concentrated solution with around 200 ml of distilled water. After the less concentrated solution is made, we now need to choose what metal salts we want to use. I went with copper sulfate and potassium nitrate because I had them on hand, but it turned out that potassium nitrate didn't work. If you want the experiment to look better, you need to make some crystals of the salt you choose. To do that, you need to get the random amount of the salt, add hot water until no more of it dissolves, and put that into a fridge for a few days to then return to a few pretty big crystals that you can use for the demonstration. So, if you have everything ready, you can fill a container with the sodium silicate solution and then drop in the crystals. Large crystals will make more thick columns and small bits will make them tall and thin. At first nothing will happen, but after a few minutes you will see small spikes coming off the crystals. In the example you see here, the reaction takes much longer than usual, because I did something wrong with the concentration of sodium silicide, but in the end it turned out ok. The blue structures also started turning black, and that's probably because there was some copper oxide forming inside them. 
After the structure stop growing, you can carefully pour out the water using a syringe, because pouring the water normally would ruin them. And when you're done, you can dry them and use as a nice decoration. So now that we know how to make the demonstration, let's talk about how it works. When you drop a crystal of a metal salt into the sodium silicate solution, its surface will quickly react, forming the metal silicate. In our case, the copper sulfate is reacting to form copper silicate. The yield of the silicate is not perfect and has some imperfections that allow water to diffuse inside of it and dissolve the salt to make a solution. When more and more water diffuses into the layer, pressure increases and causes the thin layer of silicate to rupture. The solution of the metal salt rushes upward because it has a lower density than the silicate solution. In my case, the concentration of the silicate was too low and that caused the structures to grow very slowly. The released solution reacts again to form another layer of the silicate, the pressure causes another rupture and the cycle repeats. A nice thing is that you can actually recycle the sodium silicate solution and use it for another garden, but the solution gets weaker over time, so the new gardens will grow slower. The reason that not all metal salts work with this is because their silicates are soluble in water, which I learned the hard way by trying to use potassium nitrate. So on a final note, if somebody has a method of removing copper silicate stains from glassware, please write in the comments because almost all of my beakers are covered in it and after trying to remove it with my whole detergent collection, it is still there. So I think that it sums it up pretty well, as always thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you like the video and see you in the next one.